White House correspondent Karen Travers joins me live now for more on the reaction to this. Karen, you talk to radio hosts across America every day. So what are they saying to you? What are their thoughts on this chaos on Capitol Hill? Well, Diane, the one question I keep getting is, when is this going to end? Of course, I can't answer that. They also want to know how this is going to end. Does this end up with Kevin McCarthy as speaker? And what is the process of getting to that point? What are the concessions that he can make? You know, Diane, in my many years now of talking to radio stations across the country, the one thing I've really learned is that Americans do not like the process, the sausage making up on Capitol Hill. They want to know what this all means for them. So a lot of the questions I've been getting now over the past couple of days is, if this drags on for a long time, into next week maybe, what does it mean for the business of Congress, for constituent services? What is not getting done? And I think the point that we've been making for the last several days, which is important, is nothing is getting done. That The House is essentially frozen. New members aren't sworn in. They can't do committee work. They can't do anything. And that is something I was hearing a lot about today, a lot of questions about why aren't they doing actual work as they're scrambling and fighting over this leadership process? Now, Karen, President Biden yesterday called this whole thing embarrassing. Do you expect we'll hear more from him on this today? Diane, we were really surprised at how candid he was talking about this yesterday. He came over and spoke to reporters on three separate occasions. That is very chatty for the president. One was unprompted. He clearly wanted to engage on this, and that came a day after his press secretary said that the White House was not going to insert itself into this process. Now, the president did say that the House Republican situation is not his problem, but he said it's embarrassing and that the world is watching to see how this gets sorted out. He said he hoped they would get their acts together yesterday. That, of course, did not happen. But he said that this is too critical. There's too much work that has to get done and that it is embarrassing that Congress and that the United States right now is functioning like this. Now, President Biden uh, is set to give remarks on border security today. So what can we expect on that front? He is going to be talking about his push for Congress to fund the Department of Homeland Security, what he is saying is record funding, a request from him, as well as moving forward on a comprehensive immigration reform plan that the White House says he proposed on day one. Diane, he's also going to be talking about a trip he will be making on Sunday to the border, El Paso, Texas. This is the first time that he will be visiting the U.S. southern border since he took office. He'll be going down there to take a look at border operations and meet with local officials that the White House says have been solid partners in their effort to stem and get a handle on this record number of migrants that are trying to come here to the United States. The White House says they are fleeing oppression and gang violence in countries like Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Haiti. This is a very significant trip for the president. Uh, he's under a lot of criticism for not making a visit like this since taking office. It also comes right before he goes to Mexico for two days for meetings with the president of Mexico and the prime minister of Canada. Migration will be a top issue on the agenda for that summit. And Karen, tomorrow uh, the president expected to present the President's Citizens Medal to several officers who defended the Capitol two years ago on January 6th. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, this will be quite a ceremony at the White House tomorrow afternoon. The president will be marking the two-year anniversary of the January 6th attack at the Capitol by giving out those awards to several of those officers who are now really very familiar faces, household names, people like Harry Dunn, uh, Michael Fanome, but also some of the other election officials that we heard from during the committee hearings of the January 6th committee. Jocelyn Benson, uh, the Secretary of State from Michigan, Ruby Freeman, who was an election worker from Georgia, will also be honored. This is going to be an event tomorrow here at the White House. We'll be getting more details from officials today, but a chance for the president to reflect back on that moment. Also just really interesting when you think about what was happening two years ago at the Capitol, that type of chaos and violence, and also what's still happening right now. A different kind of chaos, of course, but still very striking. All right, Karen Travers, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.